have uh, another special guest joining us. This one, really cool. I'm really excited to talk to him. I want to bring on Josh from Skin Reaper Studio. Hello. What's What's everybody doing tonight? Oh, not too much, man. Let's get ready to make some more masks. Yeah, uh, and that's what I want to talk to you about is your mask, because you got quite a bit, and they don't seem to last long. They they almost seem like as soon as you make them, they're pretty much gone. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I I have them up there, you know, but, you know, when people come in, I, I make them right when they want them, so they're not stationary. You know, they don't say, this is my personal collection. So everybody, if, if they order a mask, I make it, you know, right within the same time frame that they ordered it. So they're all fresh. Now, when you go to MHC or Transworld or even Fear Expo and stuff, you, you can throw a stick in there and you can find somebody making a mask and some great masks too. I mean, there's, there's a lot of great mask makers out there, fantastic mask makers. But I've always noticed, like, with yours, and I think we, you and I talked about this a little bit uh, back in April at Fear Expo, you have very unique style masks. Like, you don't just have a scarecrow mask. Like, there's something unique about it. Um, there was one I just saw today. Uh, I don't know if Chris can bring up your Facebook page and I can point it out to you. But I'll try to describe hey, it. Hey, hey, hey. How about the scarecrow yeah. creature, the one I just finished yeah. up? Yes, that's the one. I was just looking at that today. And, um, yeah. you know, with uh, the the burlap sack type mask, this one's extremely unique. I was wondering if you can kind of talk to us about it. Well, you know, it was kind of like I sculpted this mask and I thought, well, it's, it's a scarecrow mask. I like it, but it needs something more, you know. So I, I put some straw coming out of the top and I said, no, that's not quite it. Uh, what does it need? You know, what is something different? And I, I want to sculpt, I'm, I'm getting ready to sculpt a creature, okay? So I thought, well, why don't I just uh, add some tentacles to this and see what happens, you know? So I threw on the tentacles, and uh, it just kind of came together, you know? So it became a creature that's living inside this inside the scarecrow that maybe escaped from a lab, let's say. It found its way, you know, saw that scarecrow and said, I'm going to get up inside that scarecrow and let that be my camouflage, you know? So birds land on him and he, and he can reach up there and grab those birds or those tentacles and eat, you know, whatever he wants, whatever he wants, you know? And there he is. There's a monster inside the mask, you know, or inside the creature. It's scarecrow. it's funny because it, it should work. Like, it, it, I mean, you take tentacles and, you know, like, the, the burlap idea and it, it shouldn't work, but it does. Like, no, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> like, you made it work yeah. extremely well, and it, like it's it's so unique and it's it's incredible. Like I I love it. It's amazing. But you have a yeah. lot of unique masks. Like I mean, you got your Yeti mask. Yeah, I mean, you got your mummy mask. Yeah, there's there's your your predator mask is incredible. But what's your favorite mask? Oh, you know, it's it's hard to pick, man. You know, I mean, I think the stuff I'm doing now is is better than than the stuff I did in the, like early on. You know, so you know, I like I like Slippery Sam quite a bit, and I like the new Scarecrow, I like the Scarecrow creature. You know, um, I just do. You know, they're probably my favorites. Uh, I mean, even the, the original Scarecrow, I like him too. Where's he at? There he is. Yeah, I like him too. He's a unique character in a sense, you know. I like them all, man. I do. I like them all. Well, tell us about your creative process. Uh, it, it's really just sometimes. Sometimes it's just sitting down at the desk with our blank armature and clay, you know. It's just that simple. I mean, you can sit and you can draw pictures out or you can look for reference. You can call the internet trying to find reference and piece things together in your head. But sometimes it's just as simple as, as I sit down at the desk with a blank armature 
and clay and my tools and I just sit back and breathe for a minute and then just start throwing clay on. Like I can have no idea what's over that what, what I'm gonna sculpt, but I'll start throwing clay on. And it just kind of happens, you know. Uh sometimes it's it's it is strictly from reference. Uh if someone says to me, Josh, I want you to sculpt this character, uh can you sculpt it? I say, okay, give me as much reference as you can give me, you know, pictures wise. If you have someone who draws, let them draw out the pictures from different angles, from from profile to straight on to the backside, uh, everything you can get. And then I'll I'll take those pictures and I'll line them up and, and I'll use them while I'm sculpting. And it's in a lot of ways that's a much faster process uh, if you have good good reference, you know, and then you can kind of piece things together from there. But that's pretty much it, man. You know, it's if, if like I've got like the character I want to sculpt now. I'm not going to go into depth because I want to. I don't even want to post that online either. Either until I'm done with it. But the character, it's it's. I've got some pictures uh, that were drawn to my dad. He draws a lot, so I got some pictures from him that he drew of a character, and he just plopped it in front of me and said, "Hey, Josh, can you?" You know, you might want to think about sculpting something like this. What do you think? So I'm probably going to do it. I'm going to add my own flair to the character. And uh, it's going to look pretty cool when I'm done. So, but I'm not going to post anything about it till I'm finished with it. But yeah, photo reference is good. Illustration is good. Uh, even just, you know, if someone says to me, I kind of want this idea. You know, but I want you to go ahead and, and freely just do what what you see, you know, that works good too. So do you wish process, you know. Uh I haven't got one yet, but I have I have a question. So yeah, how did you get into like making masks and learning how to do it? Well, you know, I wanted to when I was a kid I wanted to do it. And uh, it was one of those things I was, I used to watch, uh, what was it called? It was a show that was on Discovery Channel. Uh, uh, Movie Magic was the show. And I watched that, and it was, it covered a wide range of different uh, film work, okay? So it was, if you're a camera person, they had, they had, like, one day it'd be all about camera work. Another... Another day when it was on, it'd be about maybe makeup effects. And they just covered that for the whole show. And then the next show might be stunt doubles, things like that, you know. But they, they, when they covered the, like, the film effects work, so, uh, like, the special effects behind the scenes stuff, so they'd build these little little, little figures or, or little, uh, little cities, little towns or suburbs and things like that. All that stuff really interested me. So it wasn't just one specific genre or, or element of film work that interests me. It was the whole, the whole special effects spectrum, I guess. Uh, so that, when I was a kid, is what really interested me in, into it. And I started watching behind the scenes. I used to watch, like, uh, I had a, a VHS of uh, Dream Warriors, one of the Freddy films, or, and uh, they had, like, a chest of souls and stuff like that were going on it. I love watching how they did that with a big sheet of latex and they're pushing themselves through that, through that latex and they're coming out, you know, and they're, the soul's pushing through, you know, it's pretty cool. So I love that kind of stuff. And, uh, I got laid off from, from a job in 09 or 08, like for Christmas. So I said, I'm going to start getting myself into what I want originally, you know, from when I was a kid. And I just started sculpting, started sculpting, sculpting, sculpting. Every month I was sculpting something new. And it wasn't great. I'll be honest. You know, it, great. Um, but as time progressed, you know, I started getting a little better, a little better, a little better. And had some time where I didn't do anything at all just because the circumstances weren't right. And, and I was working outside a lot, trying to do all this artwork outside. And uh, it just didn't work out. You know, you get things falling out of the trees into your molding material or 
uh just you're dealing with the weather it gets it's warm during the day and then it cools off at night and you're still making a mold well the mold now wants to crack because it's heating up and it's got cool air on it you know so there's all these different elements of things that were interfering in in the process so i kind of out of frustration said well okay i'm done with that for a while and uh when you know 2018 came i, st- I was working pretty steadily and i decided i'm going to build this little studio that I can work in and start making things happen as much as I can. So I started building that. And in 2019, October, I got it finished. So, well, maybe it was November when I got it finished up. And uh, by 2020, uh, January 2020, I was starting to make things, like make little shrunken heads and get back into that again. And uh, I just kind of developed to where I'm at now you know, with the you know, making these masks and stuff. So it's for me, mask making is a is a step. It's a stepping stone. It's not the final it's not the final stage. You know, there's there's masks, then there's there's makeups you can make and there's prosthetics you can make and there's uh uh just everything. You know, it's it's such a big uh, arena, special effects in itself, you know. So that's kind of what gets me started and where I'm at now. Um, another question I got is from Keith, and it says, who are Josh's biggest mask-making influences? Oh, man. You know, I started, when I, when I first started sculpting, I had one video, and it was by Mark Alfrey, and it was Sculpting the Human Head. And uh, his work, his work is still, you know, it's it's amazing work. Uh, I'm not even sure if he even still still sells that video, sculpting the human head, or and he had a couple different ones too, like uh, maquette sculpting. I think he had. I think I've got that one somewhere. Um, but yeah, Mark Alfrey is he's was a big influence in the very beginning for me. Uh, Jordi Rochelle, he's a, a fantastic sculptor. Don Lanning. Uh, Casey Love, he's a great sculptor too. Uh, Ali, I mean, there's so many. There's so many of them. All righty. And then uh, Willie May just asked, uh, would you ever make a replica of a horror icon? So basically, like, would you do any custom work for somebody? Uh, I think I would, yeah. You know, I just got done making a 3 eyed demon for Doomsday's Crypt. So that's something we're going to be doing too. Chris, you're gonna find that it's on his Facebook page. You gotta bring that up, that three eyed demon. <laughs> I saw that. That's yeah. a really cool one. Sorry, go ahead. Oh. Go ahead, John. I had to jump in. Yeah, so we just got done with that. We're gonna be doing some more of those and, and some different characters uh that, that are a big influence in that in that group too. So that's coming between maybe later this year, twenty twenty four. But Right. Now, at this past Fear Expo, you taught a class. And Willie May wants to know what your experience was like teaching that class. So what, what did you teach and uh, what was it like? Uh, you know, I, I, my, my goal, you know, was to do kind of like an introductory to sculpting. Uh, you know, basically and kind of, kind of show uh, or explain my techniques with different things. And, you know, it went okay. It was the first class I taught. You know, I, I thought, I remember in high school, I used to do uh, public speaking. And I always, you know, I had a hard time in the class, but I'd ace that portion of it, you know. And uh, so whether it be like debates or or just giving uh, presentations, I did a good job with it then. Uh, now it's a different story. It's been a long time since I've done that. So, uh it was it was a different experience, you know. I was nervous, you know. It happens, but I think the more I do it, the better off, you know. The better off, more comfortable I get with it, you know. Yeah, absolutely, and and you know, it's a, a a lot of people have a lot to learn off of someone with your types of talent, and I mean, not just in the sculpting and in mass making realm, but in the creative side as well. I mean, you have a lot to offer. Yeah, thank you. Um, what was, I just saw a question that popped up. Uh, it was from Brianna. She said, Josh, what is your number one goal to accomplish by sculpting masks? Uh, 
my number one goal is, as I kind of alluded to, is that it's a stepping stone. It's a stage in the process for me, for where I want to be. I want to, I want to be working in film work. And uh, whether it be working with silicones and, and making uh, prosthetics, prosthetic makeups, or, or making uh, prop limbs or, or any of that. You know, if I, my goal is to be working in a, in a studio, even if I start out at an entry level position, I kind of, you know, gradually work my way up in that, working with a group of people that are highly talented people. And for me, I want to be able to take what I've got and grow from that. You know, uh, it's hard for me to teach people. It, it just is. I don't know why it is, but it's, I always, if I, if I say something wrong or, or give the wrong advice or something like that, I don't want to, I don't want to be the, the, the responsible for a bad result, so to speak, you know? So I'd rather be the one being taught in some ways, but you know, I want to be in a, in a, uh, film environment. I do. So that's kind of the goal. Like, you know, working in a film studio. Right. Um, and then I got this question. Uh, will you be teaching another class next year? Uh, I think so. I think we're, we're talking about that a little bit. So and then I, think it'll I, better, I think it'll go better next year. <laughs> <laughs> so, it'll be more comfortable. Yeah. Um, and then earlier I got the question of... Uh, I think it was I'm trying to find it. I was trying to remember it off the top of my head, but that did not work. I think it was, do you do this like a, as a full-time job? I think that was what the question was. I am right now. Yeah. Yep. Nice. But yeah, he can't, he can't keep them on the shelves. I mean, they're, they're going like crazy. So are you still taking orders for this year? I'm still taking orders. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I have my, my Etsy site up do you know what you so I have my Etsy site up? Uh, two weeks, about sometimes three. You know, during the show, I had it at six to eight weeks, I think. Uh, you know, after after Fear Expo, it was about six to eight weeks to get things done. But now I'm, I'm back to a level position. So if it's, you know, one to two weeks at the most, I think I put three for the new Scarecrow, I put three weeks, but it's one to two. Sometimes even a little sooner than that, I can get it out. Willie wants to know if you're ever going to do clowns. Uh, you know, I sculpted a small clown figure. Uh, I don't have it out here, but yeah, it's a small little clown figure. I want to do a resin cast of it. But yeah, I'm, I'm late. I'm late at some point. Do clowns, you know. Well, you mentioned your Etsy store, so... Uh, tell us where we can find Skin Reaper Studios all out on the interwebs and any shows you got coming up and everything like that. Okay, well, if you go to uh, www.skinreaperstudios.etsy.com, uh, that's my Etsy shop, and you can find everything. Most of what I've got up here, I've got on that, on that site. Uh, I don't have the... Uh, the shock monster up oh, there yet, but I need to find I need to find a place where I can get those little wigs and then I'll pop him back up there. But everything else you can find there. But yeah. And then on Facebook, of course. Yep, the other day I have the Skin Reaper Studios Facebook page. Uh then I you might be able to contact me there. I'm not sure if the messenger is working on there, but if you find if you look at something on there that you like. Uh, message on it and I'll see that message be able to respond to you that way and do you have any upcoming shows uh not right off the top no not right off the top you going to Hong Kong uh I don't believe so no you going to Fear Expo Fear Expo yeah I go to Fear Expo nice see you again there at Fear Expo Well, Josh, it's getting late. I don't want to keep you up all night because I know you got masks to make. So everybody head on over to Skin Reaper Studios, get your masks in. You heard it here, two to three weeks lead time, so you have plenty of time to get your masks 
for your mask orders in and shipped out to you for your haunt in time for haunt season. We all know it's coming. So get it done. Get it done now. Josh, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for being a part of Fear Expo and teaching your class. I hope you teach another class. Like I said, people got a lot to learn from a guy like you. So thank you so much. And I will see yep. you in April. April? All right. Well, thank you guys. It was a great pleasure being on the show again tonight. Thank Have you. a good one, my friend. <laughs> Okay, so now we got a here we got we got to point at this one together. Which one? I think we're on that one for <laughs> we we got to deal with Willie Willie May now because if. <laughs>